After 21 years of not knowing my bio parents, I finally met them. But my grandma tried to stop our reunion. I have always been a very happy kid, thanks to my parents, Robert and Michelle. From bedtime stories to family dinners, I grew up surrounded by their love and support. I was about to turn 21 last week. My parents decided to make it special by throwing a surprise birthday party for me. They gifted me tickets to a Taylor Swift concert, knowing how much I loved her. I was beyond thrilled and had a fun evening with my friends singing to my heart's content at the concert. When I returned home after the party, I felt content and happy. The night had been magical, thanks to the love and thoughtfulness of my parents. I noticed a change in the atmosphere as I saw my parents having a quiet conversation in the kitchen that seemed serious. Curious and a bit worried, I asked them if something was wrong. They motioned for me to sit down, and I could sense that they wanted to talk about something serious. I joked if this was about my messy room, trying to lighten the mood. But my parents didn't smile which made me a bit nervous. We sat down in the living room, and my parents took a deep breath and handed me an envelope. I looked at it curiously, thinking maybe they wanted to give me something again for my birthday, but my mom interrupted my thoughts. She told me that before I opened the letter, they wanted to tell me something very important, something they had been debating for a long time. At this point, I was filled with a mix of curiosity and a tinge of anxiety. I nodded, urging them to go on. My mom began to share a part of my life that had been a complete mystery to me until now. She revealed that they were not my real parents and had, in fact, adopted me from my bio parents when I was just three months old. As her words hung in the air, I felt a whirlwind of emotions. My mind raced to comprehend this revelation my entire identity suddenly felt like pieces of a puzzle scattered on the floor. I turned to look at my dad, seeking reassurance, and he gave a somber nod. My parents began to share that they had tried to get pregnant for a very long time but had been unsuccessful. After years of disappointment, they decided to explore adoption. The waiting was agonizing, but after two long years, they finally got the call that changed their lives, a chance to welcome a baby into their family. This is how they met my biological parents who had apparently got pregnant at just 17 years old. They were facing disapproval from their own parents, my bio-grandparents, who strongly opposed the early pregnancy. They explained that my bio-parents had a tough time after my birth and, with heavy hearts, had decided it was best for me to have a different life. My bio-parents loved how warm my adoptive parents were with me and had readily agreed to go forward with the adoption. Sitting there and hearing my parents talk felt surreal to me, and part of me wished it was all just a prank. They reassured me that keeping this information from me wasn't about deceit but stemmed from their love. They wanted me to experience a regular childhood without the weight of this knowledge. My mom pulled out an album, sharing that my bio mom had documented her pregnancy journey. She had also written a letter for me, which was inside the envelope that I had handed earlier. My mom had apparently asked my adoptive parents to give these to me when I turned 21. Taking a moment to gather my thoughts, I hesitated but eventually opened the envelope. The letter inside was a heartfelt message from my bio mom, expressing her love for me. She expressed the joy she felt when she first discovered her pregnancy and couldn't wait to be a mother. She wrote how excited my dad was to hear the news and they had excitedly planned their future. She candidly went on to share the challenges they both faced from their parents who deemed that they were too young to be pregnant. They continued to struggle and fight for me but ultimately had to yield to their parents' demands when they realized that they couldn't give me the life I deserved. After I was born, they eventually made the heartbreaking choice to give me up for adoption which was the hardest decision they ever had to make. She continued to apologize for not being there for me and hoped that I had found happiness and love with my adoptive parents. In the end, she mentioned that after I turned 21, if I wanted then I could come and meet her and she would be ready to answer all my questions. Tears welled up in my eyes as I read her words, realizing the complexity of emotion she must have felt while writing this. My adoptive parents sat quietly, giving me the space to process all this. As I flipped through the photo album, a wave of emotions washed over me. My hands etched the smile on my mother's face as I noticed the similarities that we had. I noticed how I had the same curly hair as my dad. I had always wondered about my hair as neither of my adoptive parents have curly hair but it all made sense to me now. Each picture of my biological parents told a story, the smiles reflecting their joy, the challenges etched on their faces. For the first time, I held a connection to people I had never met. My parents then revealed that they could disclose my bio parents' identity if I wished to meet them. I responded with a nod, acknowledging that I deserved to meet them and ask a million questions going on in my head. The prospect of meeting them stirred up a potent blend of emotions, leaving me caught between the intense curiosity to know more and the uncertainty of how this unexpected reunion might unfold. My parents shared that my bio mom was Rose, aged 38, and my dad was James also aged 39. They told me that they could set up a meeting with them in the coming weeks if that's what I needed. I nodded, a mix of excitement and nervousness bubbling within me. My parents, understanding the weight of the situation, again emphasized that whatever choice I made, they would stand by me. I expressed that I would like to meet them and talk to them further about my childhood. Over the next few days, I found myself grappling with a mix of anticipation and trepidation, unsure of how this significant chapter in my life would unfold. 
My mom shared that my bio mom was thrilled about the idea and had readily agreed to meet me over the weekend but my bio dad had not responded just yet. As the weekend approached, I felt more and more nervous by the minute. I was still coming to terms with the news about my bio parents, and in just two days, I would be meeting my bio mother in person which was nerve-wracking honestly. Little did I know, fate had other plans for this chapter of my life. Today, my parents called me downstairs to meet someone. Intrigued, I headed down and found an older woman standing at our doorstep. The woman motioned for me to come closer. She mentioned her name was Linda and that she was my biological grandmother, as we shook hands. Glancing at my parents, I saw they were just as surprised as me to see her. My bio grandma then asked if we had recently reached out to my bio mother, Rose, and expressed a desire to meet her. I nodded saying that my parents had reached out to Rose as I wanted to meet her. Sensing some tension, my parents suggested we sit down with her and discuss this openly. Linda then shared that my bio mother was very excited to meet me this weekend and had been talking to her about it, which is how she found out about our upcoming meeting. My bio grandma then solemnly asked why I wanted to meet her after all these years. My mom explained to her that they had contacted my bio mom as she had stated during the adoption that if, after turning 21, I wished to meet her, I could. Linda shook her head, expressing regret that they shouldn't have done that. Confused, my brows furrowed, as she began to explain that my bio mother had already given me up, hence there was no need for me to see her now after all these years. Hearing those words felt like a punch to my gut. My dad interjected and asked what she meant by that. Linda then went on to say that she had always regretted that her daughter got pregnant at such an early age. She described Rose, my bio mom, as a brilliant student until she met James, my bio dad. Linda painted James as someone not quite up to par, distracting Rose from her studies. Against her wishes, they started dating and eventually got pregnant during college. Rose's pregnancy became a source of shame for my grandparents, and initially, they refused to accept her. It was only when James pleaded with them to let Rose stay in their house until she gave birth that they reluctantly agreed. Throughout my bio mother's pregnancy, my grandparents insisted that she give me up. No matter how much she pleaded, they refused to support her. Eventually, she did give me up, simplifying all of their lives according to Linda. Rose and James didn't last long as a couple afterward. My mother eventually went on to graduate as a valedictorian from college. Currently, she's married, and she and her husband have two children together. I listened to all of this quietly. Linda then turned her attention to me, saying that I should be happy and content with the parents I have now instead of trying to destroy my bio mother's life by contacting her. I asked her how I was doing that when I simply wanted to meet with her and talk. Linda said that my bio mother's current husband had no idea about me and she would like my mother to keep it that way. According to Linda, my mother had brought only shame to the family by getting pregnant with me before marriage so she didn't want anyone else to find out about it. Linda audaciously inquired if I was seeking financial assistance, leaving me dumbfounded by the boldness of her question. Hearing this, my parents exchanged angry glances, clearly upset by Linda's judgmental comments. My dad spoke up, defending my right to know about my origins and questioning why Linda was so harsh in her views. Linda, in turn, responded defensively, insisting that it was for the best and that my bio mother's life had moved on without me in it. She insisted that I wasn't going to get anything by meeting her after all these years. Despite my parents' attempts to keep the conversation civil, emotions were running high. I caught in the middle, tried to maintain a calm demeanor, expressing my desire to meet my bio mother without causing any harm. Linda, however, seemed adamant in her belief that reconnecting would only bring shame and disruption to her daughter's life. The tension in the room kept rising as my parents reiterated that Rose had indeed agreed to meet me. They insisted that if she had changed her mind, it should be Rose herself communicating that, not Linda. My parents argued vehemently, stating that Linda had no right to interfere in my desire to connect with my bio mom. Frustrated, Linda finally stood up, making it clear that she disagreed with our decisions and was leaving. My parents, though angry, tried to reassure me that I had their support no matter what choice I made, even if Linda disapproved. I am sitting in my room lost in words. I can't fathom what prompted my bio grandma to come to our house and say these things to my face. It has left a bitter taste in my mouth and I am afraid my bio mother might feel the same way too. While I hold no expectations from Rose, I will be a bit hurt if she makes me feel as unwanted as Linda has made me feel. I also feel guilty realizing my parents reached out to her solely because of my desire to connect, potentially impacting her current family. So Ida for having reached out to my bio mother and potentially jeopardizing her life with her current husband and children? Should I cancel our plans to meet and leave things as they are? Update 1, my bio dad reached out to my parents. Yesterday after Linda came to meet us, I was feeling really down but my parents shared that my bio dad, James, had replied back to their message and would love to meet me. Apparently, he had been overseas for work and missed their initial Facebook message. Knowing he's eager to meet me brings relief and adds a touch of happiness to my spirits. I am supposed to meet Rose tomorrow but I am really nervous and still unsure. I have been wondering if I should cancel the plans. I am afraid that Linda might turn up during our meeting and start yelling at me again. Wrestling with these thoughts is overwhelming, 
and I am grappling with the decision to either face this head on or reconsider the plans altogether. Update 2, it's been a few days since I gave an update to my last story. I finally met Rose and James during the weekend as I had mentioned earlier. I went to the cafe thinking that I was only supposed to meet Rose. As I nervously entered the cafe, my emotions were a whirlwind. I looked around and recognized them almost instantly as it was like staring into a mirror. There they were, my bio parents, waiting for me with a mixture of anticipation and uncertainty etched on their faces. Rose, my bio mom, smiled warmly, her eyes reflecting a blend of emotions love, curiosity, and perhaps a touch of anxiety. James, my bio dad, stood up to greet me, with a genuine expression that mirrored both excitement and apprehension. Our initial interaction was a mix of awkward smiles and hesitant words. Rose broke the ice by asking if I had any questions. Encouragingly, she looked at me as I hesitated before asking why they decided to give me up despite facing financial troubles. Rose began to explain that at the tender age of 17, navigating college life, she found herself with no support system as a first-time mother. She and James had earnestly tried to secure employment, but the demands of their intensive classes made it challenging to find a job that could sustain their basic needs. James added that his parents had passed away long ago, leaving him with no one to turn to for assistance. Tears welled up in Rose's eyes as she continued to stress that she had been willing to sacrifice her career, but her parents vehemently opposed her, going so far as to threaten to cut her off entirely. It became clear to her that she wouldn't be able to provide me with the life I deserved. James interjected, expressing their commitment to providing me a better life, one they believed they couldn't offer at that time. He expressed how extensively they had discussed the adoption situation, and it had left both of them emotionally scarred. He shared that they couldn't overcome the pain after giving me up, ultimately leading to their separation. Rose, now silently crying, reached out and held my hands, a mixture of sorrow and connection lingering in the air. I could sense the deep sadness and regret in both of them. Curious, I asked them if they ever regretted giving me up. James, with a heavy heart, admitted, every day, and broke down emotionally. Witnessing their pain unfold before me, made me feel bad. It was strange, just moments ago, they were strangers, yet now, as they cried I could feel a connection with them that I couldn't explain. To lighten the mood, I asked them to share the story of how they met. Rose, warmly smiling, perhaps reminiscing about their fond memories, shared how James had persistently pursued her for five months before she finally agreed to go on a date with him. James joked about finding every excuse to spend time with her, admitting to spending hours in the library just hoping for a chance to talk to her. He thought he would have had to pursue her even more, but, thankfully, she said yes. Linda blushed at this, and we all shared a laugh. Watching my bio parents laugh and share about their college days like two giddy teenagers warmed my heart. As they continued to share stories, the initial tension in the air began to dissipate, replaced by a growing sense of understanding and connection. They talked about how they eventually fell in love with each other. Linda reminisced about the day she found out she was pregnant and had revealed her pregnancy to James. She described how he leapt out of the chair in joy to hug her. Despite her initial hesitation about how he would react, James reassured her that he would do anything for her. I realized that even though they couldn't keep me and had to eventually give me away, I was a product of their love and I couldn't ask for anything more than that. I mustered the courage to express my gratitude for the photo album and the heartfelt letter. Rose, visibly moved, shared how she had carefully documented every moment during her pregnancy, hoping that one day I would get to see it. James chimed in, saying that he helped take her pictures hoping that one day they could show those pictures to me together. Hearing him say this, I gulped back tears. Rose then asked me how my life had been until now. I told her that I never made me feel like I wasn't their child. Hence it was a complete shock when they revealed the existence of my bio parents on my 21st birthday. I continued, expressing how they have provided me with everything I ever wanted and more. Rose and James sighed in relief. They shared that they had spent countless hours meeting parents and had eventually decided on my adoptive parents when they saw how kind they were. They admitted they were apprehensive about how I might perceive them, given the circumstances surrounding my adoption. However, they were grateful to hear that my adoptive parents had created a loving and supportive environment for me. I then cautiously asked Rose if she had any recent communication with her mother. She had a puzzled expression on her face as she questioned how I knew about her mother. With a sigh, I revealed the unexpected visit her mother made to our home two days ago. Rose's eyes widened in surprise as I shared the events of what happened. I described how Linda had confronted my adoptive parents, expressing disapproval and discouraging any contact between me and her. Rose's expression shifted from confusion to concern, and she immediately got enraged that her mother had tried to dissuade me from meeting her. She apologized for her mother's behavior and asked me to convey the same to my parents. She continued to explain that her mother had always been controlling towards her all her life. I nodded in understanding as I knew this was a very complex situation. James seemed enraged also and assured me that I hadn't made a mistake by reaching out to them. He conveyed that both he and Rose had wanted to meet me for a long time but were hesitant to intrude on my life. They were overjoyed when my adoptive parents reached out to them. 
Rose chimed in, agreeing to this, and told me that she had already made up her mind to talk to her husband about me as she felt no shame about me. She continued to tell me that if I wanted to in due time she would love to introduce me to her family. As her words settled in, relief washed over the lingering doubts I had about disrupting her life. Knowing that she not only welcomed the connection but also desired to be a part of my life felt like mending a bridge between two worlds. Her openness and sincerity struck a chord, easing the uncertainty that had shadowed my decision to meet her. Rose continued to open up about her current family, expressing the challenges and joys of her life. She spoke about her husband and their children. Her voice trembled as she revealed how similar I looked to her eldest child and that I had the same eye color. James, in turn, talked about his busy life as an investment banker who traveled around the globe. He hadn't yet had the time to settle down and start a family but did have a long-time girlfriend named Ginny. Our conversation moved through a spectrum of emotions raw honesty, shared regrets, and moments of laughter as we discovered common interests and traits. They showed genuine interest, asking about my friends and even inquiring about my current boyfriend. They expressed their sincere desire to build a relationship with me at a pace that was comfortable for me, and I nodded in agreement. Despite the years that had elapsed since our lives diverged, there was a palpable connection a shared sense of belonging and the acknowledgement of the intricate web that bound us. As we said goodbye that evening, I felt a bunch of emotions thankful for the chance to meet, and the realization that this meeting was just the start of something new. Since that day, James and Rose have continued to stay in touch with me. After meeting my bio parents, my adoptive parents heard everything I had to say. They were glad that James and Rose had met me in the cafe together and had been so open to all my questions. In their eyes, I could see their love, assuring me that no matter what happens in the future, I have their support. They continue to help me navigate through the mix of emotions that has come with this unexpected chapter in my life. Update 3, it's been 6 months since my last update. Thanks to everyone's support and patience throughout all this. It's been a crazy journey but I'm glad to inform you that everything's going well. In the midst of all the crazy feelings and revelations, I realized I needed some extra help to figure things out. A bunch of people suggested therapy, so I decided to give it a try. Going to therapy is like having this safe space where I can spill all my thoughts without any judgment whatsoever. It has helped me deal with all the messy emotions and questions that have come with reconnecting with my bio parents. Therapy has been my way of untangling the knots and figuring out what I really want from these relationships. Rose has been awesome about this whole reunion thing. She has not only opened up to me about her life but has also introduced me to her family, just like she said she would. It happened about two months ago when she invited me over for lunch. Walking into her home, I was feeling a mix of excitement and nerves. Meeting her husband and kids made everything so real and I started to get really anxious. But they were all very welcoming, and her eldest child, Dorothy, who's got the same eye color as me, also cracked a joke that instantly broke the ice. We sat around the table, sharing stories and laughing. It was a pretty chill afternoon, and it meant a lot to me. They made me feel like I was a part of their world. I sometimes meet up with Dorothy for tennis lessons whenever I can during my crazy college schedule. As for Linda, Rose had a stern talk with her mother and asked her to mind her own business. She doesn't talk to Linda as much after finding out how she behaved with me and my adoptive parents. My bio dad, James, has continued to be in touch with me. Whenever he's back from his trips, he makes an effort to meet up. We catch up over coffee or sometimes just chill at a park. The coolest part is, he's got this knack for telling wild stories from his adventures around the world. He also never forgets to bring me chocolates or diaries, and I really appreciate these thoughtful gestures. My folks, Robert and Michelle, have been rock stars through all this. They have been there, listening, giving their thoughts, and just being the awesome, loving parents they have always been to me. Looking back on the last six months, I realize how lucky I am to have both sets of parents. Each parent contributes something unique to my life, and I have found a way to connect with each one of them in my own way. The journey is far from over, and I am aware the road ahead might hold more challenges and surprises. Yet, I am grateful for the opportunity to have met with my bio parents. It has been interesting to discover the depth of love between people that transcends beyond both biological and adoptive ties.